the moment I knew somebody was dead. A hushed courtroom heard a supergrass describe the stomach-churning moment when he realised he was the unwitting accomplice to an alleged triple murder. Darren Nichols avoided the gaze of the two men. He is accused of the executions, Jack Williams and Michael Steele, as he gave evidence at the Old Bailey. Speaking quietly, Nichols said he thought he was ferrying Wombs to a drug deal on the night of the killings, December 6th, 1995. When he realised he was the getaway driver for a murder, he said he was so shaken he nearly crashed the car. Then he told Wombs and Steele, I hope I never fall out with you two. He said Steele replied, you are not like them, it wouldn't happen to you. Nichols told the court yesterday he received a call from Steele earlier in the day asking him to meet him outside a motorbike shop in Mark's Tay. He was told they were going on to a rendezvous with murder victim Pat Tate and his friends to talk about a cocaine shipment. Nichols claimed he drove Wombs to a remote workhouse lane in Retterdon and dropped him off there, then parked nearby to wait for a call to collect him. It was only when Wombs climbed into the back of the car wearing blood splattered surgical gloves that he began to realise what had happened. He said, After a couple of moments, Mick got into the passenger seat and told me to pull away. Then he said, They went f with us again and I gathered that someone had been killed. I pulled out into the road, but I wasn't looking, and a car nearby drove into me. Mick told me to pull myself together. Then he started to hand pieces of the gun over to Jack in the back. Mick asked me several times if I was okay. Andrew Monday QC prosecution asked him, Were you? Nichols replied, I did not feel okay. He said Worms laughed, as he described how Steele's gun had fallen apart during the shooting. Steele and Wombs later drove off together. I was not in very good shape. I think I was in shock. I just wanted a drink. Mick told me Jack was a cold-hearted bastard because once Mick got out of the Range Rover, Jack had just shot them all immediately. Then he reloaded and without any emotion, shot them all again in the back of the head. He said it looked as if it meant nothing to Jack. Steele and Wombs that I'm murdering Tate, Tucker and Rolf, all from Essex. The case continues. Jail meeting led to drug gang shooting. A chance meeting in a Suffolk jail was to lead to the deaths of three drug barons who were found shot dead inside a Range Rover, a court heard. An old Bailey jury was told Michael Steele, one of the men accused of the killings, was serving time inside Hollinsley Bay Prison back in 1993. It was there he bumped into his old friend Pat Tate, who was found dead on December 7th, 1995, alongside Tony Tucker of High Road Fobbing. Craig Rolfe of Kalsha Avenue, Chafford 100. Darren Nichols, the alleged getaway driver for the killings, also shared a wing with the two men and got to know them both. He told the triple murder trial, Tate and Steele were in each other's company most of the time. When he heard Tate was coming, Steele was definitely pleased. Nichols made the claims during his first day giving evidence. He is expected to be in the dock for nearly two weeks. Nichols claimed Steele and Wombs killed Mr. Tate Mr. Tucker and Mr. Rolf after a cannabis deal went wrong. He said they lured the friends to the remote workhouse lane in Retterdon with the promise of a lucrative cocaine deal, then shot them dead at point blank range. The two men deny three charges of murder. Nichols told the court about four trips he made to Amsterdam to buy cannabis, including an occasion where the drugs proved to be dud. He said that was the deal that Tate and Steele fell out over, as Tate 37 of Gordon Road Bazardon had invested £70,000. He said it was also the deal that led to Tate's death. The case continues. Grass tells of shootings. Old Bailey jury told of laughter over executions. One of the two men accused of the execution of three drug dealers laughed as he re-encountered the shootings that Old Bailey heard yesterday. Supergrass witness Darren Nichols, a self-confessed drug dealer, told of the chilling moments when he picked up Jack Wombs and Michael Steele from the murder scene, a lonely farm track at Retterdon near Chelmsford. Wombs allegedly told how his partner's gun had fallen apart. Jack had laughed after he said that, said Mr Nichols. He said he drove Wombs to the scene, believing simply that a drug deal meeting was to take place. When he returned to the remote lane, Wombs got into the back of the car and Steele got into the front passenger seat. When the front door opened and the light came on, I saw Jack's hands, who was wearing surgical type gloves that were covered in speckles of something, which I could see was red, Mr Nichols told the court. From the way Steele spoke, he suddenly realised what was going on. 
I took it some of them and killed. Mr Nichols said, Mick started to hand guns over to Jack in the back. I could see bits of the barrel pass over. They were quite short. Mick asked me several times if I was okay. I did not feel okay. I did say to one of them, I hope I never fall out with you. I just said it as a comment. I think Mick said, you're not like those. It won't happen to you. Still, allegedly told him that Wones was a cold-hearted bastard who had pointed his gun into the victim's Range Rover, but shots into all three immediately. Nichols added that Steele said, after they were dead, Jack reloaded, and one at a time shot them in the back of the head, without any emotion. Steele and Wombs deny murdering Patrick Tate, Anthony Tucker and Craig Rolf, all from Essex, in December 1995. The prosecution alleges the three victims have been lured to the track on the promise of a substantial cocaine deal, after the falling out over a batch of pure quality cannabis resin. The trial continues today. Forensic scientist describes how Trio were killed. Three men killed in the Range Rover murders were each shot once from point blank range before five other wounds were inflicted, probably with a pump action shotgun they all barely heard yesterday. Forensic scientist John Burns concluded this occurred to prevent any escapes or attempts to hinder the shooting. It appeared this incident happened extremely quickly. One shot was fired at each victim before further shots were fired. Most of the shots appeared to have been fired at close range through the open rear offside door of the vehicle. Each of the men had received shotgun wounds to the head. There was much blood in the vehicle with splattering of blood and tissue on many of the surfaces, he added. Mr Andrew Monday, prosecuting, told the court the incident occurred over a dispute in relation to drug dealing following a consignment of cannabis from Holland, which had brought complaints all around. Mr Burns' estimate of the range was within two feet or so of a damaged headrest and added it was consistent with the same shot having caused injury to the head or neck. Tate slumped in the back seat had a superficial wound caused to the back of his head resulting in damage to the scalp and there was a large shotgun entry wound just behind the left ear. He also had an entry wound to the left side of the chest. Front passenger Tucker had an entry wound to the back of the head above the level of the ears and two wounds to the side of the face. The driver Rolf had an entry wound behind the top of the right ear and an entry wound at the side of the right neck. Oh.